Some of what I'm going to talk about is RSA conference specific, but the vast majority, the front end of this, really I believe is representative of most any conference. It's been interesting reading through Twitter streams and, and other things from people who are on program committees of, of other conferences. It, it's, it's very similar, the things that people are after. So hopefully, Don and I, Don who's read probably several thousand call for speakers over the course of your time with the program committee, both of us have seen lots of things. We've seen things that it's eureka, wow, that sticks. We've seen things that, ooh, you know, there, there's a nugget here, if only. So we'll talk to you about some of the if onlys and some of the eureka moments and what you can do to hopefully um, submit confidently and then once you get to um, conferences, no matter what conference you're at, be comfortable and confident in your expertise presenting there. So my first, I, I took, some, took some little notes because the big aha moment that I had as I've been listening to your great presentations over the last um, day and a half is that what goes into a good call for speaker submission is a lot of the same themes of what you guys have been talking about, what goes into good training. Um, you know, some, some quotes, understanding your audience, um, or you know, in this case, it's understanding your audience's audience, since we're the gatekeepers of, you know, we, know, we know the RSA conference audience, so we're looking for what's really going to resonate with our audience. So, so spend some time learning about the event for which you are submitting a session. Um, I cannot emphasize that enough. Th that knowledge of audience and that, that reflection of who that audience is, is, is very important. And one thing that Britta and I were talking about is, um, from being on the program committee, we like people that have speaking experience because you have over 40,000 people coming to hear these talks. You don't want someone that this is their first time in front of an audience. And so if you've never spoken publicly before, start small. Don't start with RSA. Start, <laughs> just start with local, you know, there are local chapters of things. There are always forums that are looking for speakers. So get your, get your feet wet and then work your way up to RSA. Absolutely. And I know Sans, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer who's in the back right now, Jennifer, wave your hand. Jennifer's my counterpart with Sands. She's awesome. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know her better. Sands does lots of different events. Um, hopefully, this this guidance we're giving you, you know, it's applicable for the for the submissions that you make through to Sands. Sands, um, this this is a big event. There are some smaller events with Sands as well. You know, look at the range of things that you have. Look at internal and do reflect those things on your submissions that come in where you have experience. At RSA conference, we do have a lot of different learning formats too. We have traditional sessions like this. We have peer-to-peer, -peer, which are discussions. Those are, those are 30 people. It's no slides. It's you are an expert facilitator facilitating a discussion on a specific topic. Those are great. They're really, really, really well-regarded sessions. That can be a way to get your feet wet in, in that community in a little bit less um, stressful setting. Um, you know, it, it's hard to get up on a stage and rock. It's harder when the stage is, you know, twice this size and there's a whole bunch of screens around. We want our presenters to, to really feel good about what they're doing. We throw a lot of resources into working with our presenters as well. But make sure you, you know, start, start where you're comfortable. And pick an area that you feel very confident in. Um, I learned early on when I started doing public speaking, it, at first I just was waiting to mess up. <laughs> and that's all I thought about was, am I gonna say something stupid? Uh, and then I came to realize that, you know what, I, this is my area of expertise. I know what I'm talking about. I don't need to be afraid. And so pick an area that you won't be afraid, that you'll feel comfortable that I am confident in what I'm speaking about. And to that end, make sure that confidence comes through in your submission. This is, this is not a time to be bashful. This is not a time to, ooh, well, maybe I have. All of you in here are, are experts by your own right in some specific area. Find that area of expertise mirrored with your area of passion. You see those submissions that come through where there's that sparkle. There is just something different when you can tell someone deeply passionately cares about something. Make sure that passion comes through. 
And, and don't be bashful. Don't feel like, oh, gosh, I, sh I shouldn't be bragging. So you're not bragging. You're showing this is, this is my expertise, darn it. I'm the very best, most qualified person to be talking about this. And t tell stories in your submission as well as in your talk. You notice I told a lot of stories today. Stories just make it interesting. It makes it real. It makes it personal. And I can tell you from being on the program committee, you know, you're reading through hundreds of submissions, and it's like, oh boy, there's another one. Sounds just like the other 10 that were talking about this topic. But when you get one where they actually tell a story, it's like, oh, that's really interesting. It's the same topic as those other 10, but this one's really an interesting way of approaching it. Exactly. Examples. That, that's, that's what grounds you, what differentiates you, which, which it does make it memorable. And sometimes it's, that's what, when you, so Dawn is not a, a queen all by herself. Dawn is a queen, but she isn't the queen of a single track. We have every track has um, two to four members of the program committee. We try to do as many checks and balances as we can do so there's no bias. Um, so Don will remember something because, oh wow, that person had the example of when they used such and such and they fell flat on their face. Fall flat on your face stories are awesome. They're good. You're, it, it, it makes you vulnerable, right? It, it's hard to put yourself out there and share failures. And yet, as we all know, it's those failures, it's those learning experiences, it's those, oh wow, I can learn from and grow from that is extremely memorable for the program committee and ultimately for the audience that receives the presentation. What did you all clap at this morning when I told you that I forgot to include our communications person in our cyber crisis, man, in our cyber crisis until later? And you loved that because I was telling you I made a mistake. And so, yeah, that's very powerful. Super. So to those communications people, um, more specifically the marketing people, don't let them touch your presentation or your <laughs> submission. Um, they want to. Many of them, particularly if you're from a vendor, they will want to weave in some of their messaging, their elements. Um, it, 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 it becomes really obvious very quickly for us when a submission has come in that is marketing driven, that is PR driven, and you know, you guys don't want to be sold to. That's not why you're here is to hear a sales pitch. N neither do attendees at RSA conference, nor attendees at probably any conference. So um, with all due respect to the wonderful marketing and corporate comms people in the world, um, you're the experts. You know, maybe if, if your company requires that they sign off on it or they see it, great, have that as a final step, but you need to drive it. Specifically to that with the RSA conference submission, there's a portion called session detail. Um, it's 2,500 characters. It's a long piece. That is where you set yourself apart from the 5,000 other submissions that are come in, going to come in on protecting your company from the Internet of Things. GDPR basics, machine learning strategies and solutions. Those are, those are three titles that people have run past me in the last two days with a, hey, what do you think? And what do I think? There might be something great in there. There probably is something interesting. But from that title alone, I don't know. It, it sounds like 20, 30 other submissions I'm going to get. So you're the experts. Make sure your expertise, the specific examples, the specific guidance, the, and then I experience this. Um, metrics, people love metrics. Where's my metrics ladies from before? Um, it's those tangibles, it's the measurable, it's the, it's the visualizations of things. Um, people love the specific learning examples that you have from within your organizations. And if you can pair up, and this is just from a public speaking perspective too, it's much more comfortable being up here with Britta tag teaming than being up here by yourself. And so if you can partner up with somebody from a different company is great because when we read those, we're like, oh wow, there's somebody from this company and this company together, that's powerful. But even within your own company, um, just you know, if you have somebody from your company who has a different perspective, then there are two very different perspectives that are going to be portrayed, and that's always interesting as well. I really, really appreciate that, yeah. RSA Conference, we're all about intersection of domains. We have legal folks, we have policy folks, we have technology folks, we have business folks, and that, that eureka moment, that aha, frankly, even within our own organizations, I almost think of it like a Venn diagram, it's finding that intersection point 
where a different conversation happens because those two people are looking at things from very different backgrounds, very different directions. That's the eureka moment. So when that eureka moment is presented to the audience, that's powerful. And that's powerful in a submission because it shows us, you know, it, it's right brain, left brain thinking. It's, it's different ways of approaching the same problem from different disciplines, just like we have to within the cybersecurity world. And actually, the highest speaking scores I ever got were when my co-speaker was our senior vice president of human resources. Because talk about the human element, how more perfect can you get? So we were talking about insider risk, but I was giving the technical perspective and she was giving the people perspective. And that was one of the most fun talks I've given. And you're the people people. <laughs> yeah, which, which also, you know, if you get to be on stage with Don, it's really easy and a lot more comfortable. <laughs> but you know, find find someone that does you know either to to co-present with, to develop the submission with. Um, when your submission goes through, the first time someone reads it, it shouldn't be me. Um, you know, share it with others. Have others in your team look at it. You know, get get some feedback from others. You know, present present, get your feet wet at, a, at, another, at another conference, at an internal event, somewhere. Make sure that when you're hitting the stage, you feel so confident because nothing is worse than, than putting you, frankly, in an uncomfortable position where you don't feel like you rock because you do. All of you have something that you are better at than anyone else in this world and, and you should have the opportunity to shine in sharing that expertise with someone. And as far as having someone else read it, if I get a submission that has misspellings and sentences that suddenly end, and they aren't complete sentences, obviously this person threw this together the night before it was due, that's very annoying. And I figure if they couldn't put a little more um, time into their submission, what's it gonna be like with their presentation? It just, it, it, right, I just throw that one on the discard pile because this is a big conference, and any conference, any place you speak, you need to put the time in and let the people know that you're submitting to. I take this seriously. I am going to do a good job for you. It also makes the program committee member a little bit nervous that you might not be respecting the deadlines because the, the program committee, um, bless their hearts, they're awesome, um, they not only pick the submissions that will appear on the track, they do two to three reviews of those presentations before they even hit the stage. Um, and that's not so we can be big brother and babysit and, and all of that. Rather, it's so that quality feedback can be given that will help you, gosh, this was really powerful and interesting, but is there a way you could put some visualization for that? Rather than you know an eye chart slide with a whole bunch of bullets, is there an image that'll work there? Is there an example that you can weave in? Is there a specific um, you know, use case that you can share? So the program committee, they're your team. They're your, they're your domain experts that are, that are really working hand in hand with you to make that better so that when you hit the stage, it, it just shines. So when something is read that has you know, a, a bunch of typos or you know, hanging sentences or whatever, it, it just leaves you a little bit nervous that maybe that might be your experience with the speaker throughout. And we're very competitive, and every year Britta gives us our scores. So you know, we talked about metrics and competition. She gives us the metrics for all of the tracks from the previous year, and you know, I want to be at the top. I don't want to be at the bottom. So I'm picking, I'm picking submissions that are going to make me look good, and that's what you have to keep in mind. That there's someone looking at this that if they aren't confident in it, you're not going to get picked. So you need to be confident in yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, I love data too. To those ladies, I love data. I love to look at the numbers. I love the story that's told to me by the trees as well as the forest as I pull back. Um, applicability. So RSA conference, we are also about what's going to help, what's going to, the audience there, how's their job going to change based on going to a session. I've loved Every single session here that I've seen, it ends with, so what do you do differently? What are your takeaways? What are you gonna do? That's so important. Um, and make sure that comes through also in your submission. Um, in our world of cybersecurity, there's a whole lot of you know, things that go bump in the night and scary things, and you know, there's a place and a time for understanding scary things and threats. But 
what am I going to do as a result of it? What differently, how do I need to approach my job? How do I need to approach my interactions with, um, with those in my organization, upward, downward, across? You know, how, how is what I've learned today going to change um, short, short, medium, and long term how I approach my job? Make sure that comes through in your submissions. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking out thinking, how many of you are thinking, I'll never speak at RSA, so why are they talking so long? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking, I have had a number of you come up to me during breaks and ask just about career in general. And this, this not RSA, but getting out and getting into the community and doing public speaking really is a boost to your career. And if you become known within your company as a person who goes out and gives talks externally, that, that gives you a lot of credibility in your organization. So don't think about this as, do I want to be a famous public speaker? Think about it as just your career growth and gaining some uh, credibility within your company and outside your company. Excellent. And I'd also think about, um, we like to constantly look at things out of the box. Um, you know, I, I've got some background in, in adult learning approaches, and, and we don't all learn the same. Some of us learn really well by sitting and listening and taking notes, maybe raising our hand, maybe not. We all say we want to network. We all say we want to, but it's really scary when I'm sitting next to someone I don't know, and what am I going to say? Um, so we have lots and lots of different um, session types um, and I'm fully aware that I probably haven't figured out every possible lesson type. So if you have an idea, if you're, hey, Britta, I really like the idea of presenting to my peers. I have this sort of thing. I don't really think it works in a format of a presentation, but what do you think if? I'd love to hear it. We do traditional sessions. We do peer-to-peer, -peer, like I said, which are facilitated discussions. We do um, labs, which are similar to the workshops that are being done here, which are great, interactive, small group. You get to roll up your sleeves and work. We've got all kinds of different formats. Um, so I'm, we are constantly experimenting. We're, we're a big enough playground that we, we constantly try to look at things different, different, different. So um, don't be afraid to try something different. OK, we're going to have to wrap things up here, ladies. So thank Excellent. you so much. If you have questions, beat them up afterwards.